This is Mackenzie Weger, and you're listening to Missing Curfew, fellas. Welcome back to a fresh episode of Mystic Curfew Up Dog. Fella, fella. Monday's baby. Monday's edition. Uh, last week was great. Talks is a beauty. Talks man. is a beauty. Don't you want to get kind of a. Oh. You should be a coach, I think. Him or me? No, you. Ah. Yeah, you'd be a good. Like rid- a guy like that. He's not for me, boys. He's no, trying but, to but, pull by me the off way, the like, coaches. After chatting with a coach like. Me off yeah, too. after. <laughs> 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 I ain't pawning you off. Um, after having a chat like that, you either want to play for a guy like that or yeah. you want to coach alongside him. Exactly. Right? Because you're in there, you're talking plays, you're talking where are we going for fucking a beer yeah. after the game. You're well, just like, you're kind of in the mix, in the know. Yeah. And you I, feel like you're in the know when you chat with Tom. Yeah. And I got to know him, you know, when he started working for TNT. I knew a little yeah. bit before that, but yeah. then I would text him and, and be like, hey, talks, I agree with what you said, or this is what I think. And and then obviously he's become friends with us through the podcast. And um, I cheered for Vancouver a lot when Greener was a coach. Then they Bruce they brought Bruce in. No disrespect to Bruce. I just didn't feel like I had any skin in the game, so to speak. Ah. Huh? And no uh, foreskin. Now with talks, he had no foreskin. He I had no foreskin. Sh- he cut it off. But. Now with talks, I'm all in. Right? Like you want the Canucks to do well as well. Yeah. You want a cup of coffee there. Like of course, we are all Canucks. Yeah, we are all Canucks. Yeah. So uh, talks was unbelievable uh, this week. Keeping it up in in Canada, moving over a little bit more east into the middle of her. Yeah. Uh, our boy Mackenzie Weger, Weezy baby. Uh, I wanted to get him in the studio. Didn't Good work timing. out. But anyways, great time. Great timing. He's heading to World Championships. New coaching change. Yeah, new GM change, new building. Yeah, a lot, a lot to talk about. They're probably feeling pretty good, right? Like they had a decent yeah. second half, missed the playoffs by a couple points, and the, now they know. got new people coming in that I'm sure they're going to have some say in, right? Guys, yeah, long term yeah. deals. Yeah, sometimes you know, like in anything, just a little shake up. You need a little shake up, and it starts. You know, sometimes it's trading away some players, which they tried last year. Yeah. Now it's shaking up the coaches coaching staff it's like back in the day when you just got to shake your bullpen up a little bit right like yeah. you're just like listen i gotta i gotta turn it over yeah or, or you it's need a, you need a greasy one just fire the stick in the garbage and get a garbage goal or like when you came back from st louis and you were fired <laughs> up to get yours locked and loaded but uh, <laughs> anyways up dog we, we, we both love the weezy baby so here he is mackenzie Weger coming at you fella welcome back to mr curfew up dog one of our Big boys fella. one of our boys here I uh, gave him a couple weeks to kind of uh, decompress. First thing I'm going to ask him here is about the year-end bender. A couple weeksy. Uh, weeksy, yeah. baby, weeksy. Weeksy, baby. Thanks for joining Mr. Curfew, buddy. You're always good to us. How you been, bud? Thanks, boys. Oh, happy. Nice to be back. I've been, I've been pretty good. Just like you said, take some time to decompress, but, you know, happy to come back on the show. First and foremost, um, you know, we talk, Oppie talks a lot about things he misses. I don't miss a whole lot, but I do miss a good year-end bender. How was it? <laughs> Where was it? What'd you do? How much fun was it? Oh, it's always a great time. Um, you know, no matter how the season ends, that's always, you know, something you look forward to. Um, the boys just got together um, the first night. You know, I don't I don't even know if you'd remember any of the places anymore there, but well, I didn't um, well we just went out as a team. Um, you know, just got loose a bit. I think, uh, <laughs> you know, we got to talk about a few things, but um, then we just did it you know, two nights in a row. And then I think after that, we, uh, we got everything sorted out at the rink. And then I think guys started to, you know, pack their stuff up and, and head home. Did you stick around Calgary for that? Or did you sneak off and golf somewhere? Like, I guess it's not really sunny in getting of April. And no. Yeah. You know, I think I might take a little heat, but actually I, 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 <laughs> I went back to the sun. I went back down South of Florida for, for a week. I just needed to, uh, you know, get out of there and, um, you know, take, take some time and just lay low on the beach with, uh, with the girlfriend and, um, you know, have some beers on the beach. You're not going to take heat for that week. It's no, okay. Everyone, even, even That's people, what everyone's supposed even to do, people by the in way. Calgary are like, fuck, I like to go to the beach here, but they, they got to punch <laughs> in for work. So you're not going to take any heat for that. <laughs> yeah. I did want you to come down here and play a little golf, though. I, I, I was giving you a few days to recover, and then yeah. I think I bumped into the big guy. So I got to see if Weezy <laughs> Baby wants to come down to California and maybe tee it up. And he's like, oh, no, he's, he's heading to a music festival. What festival did you hit up? Uh, well, Tortuga was in in Florida, but I, I actually didn't end up going. Um, the rain was was wild. I think it got postponed, and then it went back on. And uh, PJ couldn't couldn't hook me up too well with uh, with prices, so I said, "Forget about it." Oh, we, by the way, see- that uh, we did a year end party at Tortuga, um, which is that festival. It's yeah. good, and yeah, it's gotten it's better. But I saw the pictures this year from it. Maybe on the day that they figured it all out with the sun and and no rain and stuff, but it's um, it's kind of half country like half kind of rock, kind of like a little stagecoach on the beach. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah it's, really? it's really nice. It's really nice. Who were the headliners weeks this, this year? Do you remember? I think uh, the one night, 
that I was going to go with Shania Twain and I just, that wasn't doing it for me, but <laughs> Shania uh, <laughs> fucking turn her back. Yeah. I honestly, I don't know. Honestly, I think there was probably, I mean, it was, it's big. You get all the big boys, but um, I, I didn't even look into it after I, I found out I wasn't going. I said, yeah, his eyes said oh, I'm going somewhere else. Did you have a crush on Shania Twain? Or are you too young? Cause He's me, too me young. and the up dog, when she He's was in the too park, young. Yeah, yeah, you're too young. young. You're too Timmons, young. Timmons, Ontario. Is that where she's from? She's from that Timmins, she's Ontario. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, Sol- she still Steve looks Sullivan's pretty good, uh, f- uh, same spot as her. Yeah. From the same spot. I went up and played a little junior tournament there. <laughs> fuck him. You can't remember what you did yesterday, but you know, I you know went fuck, you went Especially this morning. Timmins. <laughs> he went to, is it <laughs> called little, the Big Nickel Tournament? Do you remember no, that? That's no, Sunday, it was, yeah. uh, no, it was when we played uh, like under 17s, right? I was like Team Pacific. I went over there. Oh, and wow. we'll get to that, all that Team Canada, Team Pacific stuff with this boy right here. Yeah, yeah Weezy, baby, talk me through, you know, first of all, fella, you, you, you know, we were joking before you came on, but you had a hell of a second half. I was proud of you, you, you know. I, I can't imagine all the pressure that was on you going to a new team and all that stuff. But take me down the stretch. You know, you boys fought hard. Uh, we were pushing for you to get in, but just take me in the locker room, the guys down the stretch, and, you know, how, was it enjoyable? Was it stressful? What was it like, you know, trying to get in? Uh, yeah, I think it was obviously a little bit of both. It was stressful, but I think, um, you know, the, the only issue there was it was just too late by, by the time you're always, you know how it is when Thanksgiving, Christmas, if you're already fighting for it by then, it's tough to get in. So, um, you know, we, we did everything we could, honestly. Um, there's so many competitors in that room and, and we want to make playoffs so bad. We know how important it was for the whole organization and for the fans and, and everybody. Uh, um, but it was just too little, too late by the end of it, you know, you're playing teams that you're they're battling for a playoff spot too. And, um, you know, we just couldn't catch any bounces. I thought this, this year, every game was a one goal game or we went into overtime and we couldn't figure it out. Um, it was a little stressful. It was fun. You know, we were playing playoff hockey again, the pressure was on. Um, but like I said, it was disappointing not to make it. Weegsy, I want to ask you just quickly, you've seen two ends of the spectrum and I've never ever played in Canada, but I, I played years in Florida I played years in Phoenix, so I have this Southern Belt thing in Nashville. But uh, give me like uh, a dive in as a player from, you know, leaving Florida where you were, you know, your first six, seven years to now um, different climate, different pressure, moving your family up there, you know, buying more tickets. The whole thing about being a Canadian hockey player, what, what stands out to you the most on the difference that, you know, you faced this year? Maybe you were ready for it, maybe you weren't. Yeah, I mean, there was obviously a few, um, but the, I thought the one, the, the biggest thing, obviously for me, was you, you really can't escape hockey there. Um, you know, you're you're going to the arena and you're whatever, whatever you're going to practice or you're doing video, and um, you're in the lounge and you turn the TV on and you know there's your face on TV or there's your teammate's face, or your coach's face. You go home and your face is still on TV or somebody's face is still on TV, and you're just like wow, you know, like you, you can't get away from it. And in Florida, you just, you get back in your car and you throw the flippers back on and you, you just go to the beach or <laughs> you, you throw the TV on and, and, and you, there, there is no hockey to be found, you know? So that was probably the biggest, you know, difference. Obviously, it was just such a big hockey market and it's always on. And um, that was, that was different for sure. You, you, you just you, throw the rainbow. You just throw the rainbow flip flops on eh, and a pair of board yeah. shorts and away you go. Hey, yeah. Weezy, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Get in the sports car and, and rip down. Weezy, can, can you find a way to like embrace that in a way? Yeah, like, can, can, you know, and whether that's winning games and being a, like, you know, finding a way for a team to be better, but can, can you embrace sort of that life? Like, is down here, if you're a, you know, if you're a New York Yankee or if you're walking around as a Chicago Cub, like, you mm-hmm. can't fucking escape anything either. So, is there a way yeah. like we can kind of snap mentality of like being in those Canada bubbles. Like, is there a way to, to decompress away from the rink or have maybe a new rink with a great room that when you're at the rink, things are comfortable, you know? Yeah. I mean, I thought the first half of the year was difficult to deal with. Um, As you could, you know, obviously I turned the season around, but I think I just accepted it all. I don't think there's a way to escape it. You just kind of have to accept it. And, um, you know, by the end of it, I loved it. You know, you go to the mall and you take a photo and, you know, I love taking photos or you go to a restaurant and, you, you know, somebody, you know, comes up to you and wants to chat. And, you know, the good thing about Calgary is it's not like a Toronto or a Vancouver market where they're, you know, they're going to come up and maybe, you know, chirpy or something. They're always coming up and believing in you and, um, you know, giving you positive feedback. So, um, you know, by the end of it, I just accepted where I was and um, I was happy to be there. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, sort of changed my season. 
Weeks, yeah, I know what you're saying with when you turn your TV on, but it could be worse than a bad game. Yeah. It could have been like me in Vancouver when I was suspended for two weeks, and every time I'm like, oh, I get home from a workout, I'm like, oh, first thing on TSN Sports that O'Brien suspended. I'm like, I'm enough, like, oh, enough. Right, all right, we get yeah. it. Everyone knows I've been suspended. Yeah. Like, let's let's move yeah. on. But there's not no other headlines we can yeah, run. Like, are the BC Lions not playing? Did yeah. they lose the Argonauts or what's going on here? Yeah, it's relentless. It's relentless. But but Weeks, yeah, I remember at the start of the year, you know, there was a picture of you and Hubie walking in together, right? You just signed your new ticket and you both were smiling and had the nice suits yeah. on and the sun was shining and i said to Uppy, i said i want a picture of these boys in january walk in there too like <laughs> when did you start feeling comfortable like i i know in my opinion watching you and knowing you since you're 20 years old but when did you start feeling comfortable like okay listen fuck the pressure fuck the contract i'm just going to be mackenzie Weger. yes uh, i would say right before all star break actually sort of when i saw you and for me the biggest thing is comfortability and um you know kind of feeling like you belong at first, at, in, at the beginning of the season, you know, you're meeting new guys. You're not really sure how they're going to feel, how the trade went down. You know, obviously, two of their best buddies left, and you got two new guys that you don't know. Um, so it was just a sense of belonging. And and probably just before All-Star break, I kind of, you know, got to know the guys a bit more. And, you know, I could sense that I belonged. And, you know, they wanted me to be on the team and, you know, just be myself and, and how I play hockey. And, um, you know, once I felt like that, my confidence kind of grew and, um, you know, a little bit more chatting, uh, maybe a little bit more chirping with the boys, um, <laughs> you know, all those little things that, you know, make you feel better in the room or um, give you that extra confidence. And I would say right before all-star break, that's when I, you know, accepted everything and, and sense, you know, that I belonged. Yeah. yeah. And you kind of teed me up for where I was going with my next one on, on a leadership perspective. Like, you know, like I said, I, I met Weezy when he was 20 years old, but you were just a kid. Like w when it comes to mm -hmm. leadership, I know your sense of humor and you like to laugh and all that, but you know, now moving on and, and, you know, you're going to have a new coach eventually, but now you're one of the leaders. How, have you, is that something you'll think about this off season, how you can be more of a leader? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you don't want to come into the dress room, you know, too strong yeah. and, and take over and start, mm -hmm. you know, yelling and, you know, telling what guys should do and shouldn't do. So you kind of stay quiet and you listen to the other guys and, you know, kind of see their personalities. And then, that, and then you, you kind of slowly show that your, your personality as well. And, um, you know, by the end of it, I, you know, there's a time to have confrontation and there's a time to be positive and, um, you know, pick your battles with whoever, but, you know, by the end of it, you could kind of see that the team was starting, you know, to form as a team again. And, um, you know, I think that comes with everybody just kind of letting Hubie and I sort of fit in a little bit more. Yeah. And, you know, obviously, you, you know, playing in South Florida was awesome. But one thing I did say I, that I thought you would look forward to playing was playing in front of the Sea of Red every night. And, you know, on a Tuesday, you know, there's yeah. 18,000 people in there. Like, when did it sink in that, you know, hey, this is pretty cool. Like, every night you go out there, no matter where you are in the standings, yeah, maybe sometimes you'll hear the odd boo, but you're playing in front of a full yeah. house. Like, to me, in Vancouver, that was one of the coolest things. Yeah, it was, it's awesome. Every, every night's the Sea of Red. It's always sold out. Um, you know, when they scream red, you know, during the, you know, the O Canada and it's everybody's into the game. Um, it's pretty funny though, because they're so, you know, they're so smart. They understand hockey so well that they, when they can see that we're not playing well, it's quiet. You know, it's like you're, you're waiting, they're waiting for us to get going. And then once we start, get going, once we start, get going, they get going. Um, but it's a cool atmosphere in there. I, I wish I would have got to see it in playoffs because I heard it's, it's even better. Uh, the parking lot gets going and everything, but that, that was pretty special. You know, the first few games there was pretty awesome. Hey, I know what you're saying about what they, the Canadian fans know what they're doing. My, I went from Anaheim to Tampa to Vancouver. My first game of Vancouver, Weezy Baby, I threw a pizza right up the pipe and 18,000 people were like, oh, and I was like, oh, yeah. fuck, what? Like in Tampa, they no know that that was that. a turnover? Yeah, like, what do you mean? Yeah. 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 They know that. Yeah. Fuck. So, so, they yeah, that you look pass? at your Twitter, everybody's coming at you in, in Florida, you throw one pizza. It's like one random fan, like, oh, that was tough. But there it's like, oh, yeah. Weeks, that was a tough one. Yeah. And then they just keep coming at you. It's, I just laugh at it, but they're, they're, they're smart fans. Buddy, what, what are your interviews? Sorry, I'm sorry to jump in here, but what are your, when, you, when you're interviewing early, early in the season, you're like, I, I was just a fucking pizza, good old fashioned yeah. pizza. I, la I laughed, Weeksy. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, that was a tough one. <laughs> Oof, that was a tough one. Weeksy, yeah. you do mention playoffs. We went up there last year for the Battle of Alberta. Um, that round, we caught a game in Calgary, then went to Edmonton. Um, so the atmosphere in Calgary does get rocking, right? There is there's yep. passion there. Bring me uh, bring me a dive into like a Battle of Alberta, Crosby, or sorry, Crosby, <laughs> McDavid and, and Dreisaitl, two of these guys. We went and watched them on the weekend. Um, talk about battling those guys when they're, you know, on the top of their game coming at yeah. you. Yeah, there's, it's, 
It's crazy. I, you know, the Tampa games in Florida were were those were exciting, the Battle of South Florida. But I think this one is this one's different. This one's, uh, you know, in Canadian market and you're going against the best player in the world and the second best player in the world. Um, you know, you're thinking about those games probably about two weeks out. Uh, you're circling them and you're waiting for McDavid to, you know, pick up the puck and and you, you better have a good gap. <laughs> but, um, Evan, I feel like the first time Evander Kane first shift just ran me. And behind the net and I was like okay here we go like feels like playoff hockey and then I forget I think it was CC might have scored and then dry like scored and dry said I was right in front of my face and he just pushes me and I'm like fuck here we go like, fuck these guys I hate them already so that was that was the first game but then I feel like after that McDavid came into our building I think some fans thought it was a knee but I you know I gave him a good hit uh he came up to me and he goes you don't think that was a knee I said, no, I mean, they didn't call it. He goes, I go, you can't be making those moves. He goes, I'm getting paid 12 and a half to make those moves. And I was like, okay, okay, I don't care, but it's going to be good. Uh, but it was just little things like that that are, uh, you know, make it, you know, those games special and obviously intense. And um, you want to beat those guys, you know, more than anything, you know, and, and the fans want you to beat them more than anything too. So you're doing it for the whole city. Yeah, I can't imagine trying to defend those yeah. two guys with the new rules. It's just like you poor defense, but I feel sorry for you guys every night, Weeksy baby. But skate yeah. forwards, you know, you met, Alpi brings up the Bell of Alberta, and and one of the big things for me in Vancouver was when I f- finally started playing on hockey night in Canada. You know, you realize that it's you know coast to coast. Like, what was that like for you as a kid from Ontario? You know, I don't know if you had that opportunity down in South Florida, but playing for the Flames, hockey night in Canada, double hitter. It's it's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, special. Uh, that's awesome. I remember. I forget what game it was, but uh, Scott Oaks, I believe yeah, that's yeah, his Scott name. Oak, he, yeah. he brought me in after the game for uh, uh, after after the hot stove after the game. Yeah, yeah and he put the <laughs> towel around and we yeah. go, we're talking about like the junior A days and and whatever. And I'm like, this is wild. Like, this is so cool. Like hockey night in Canada, hot stove and it with Scott Oaks. I'm like, this is wild. I just laughed and I was like, that, that was awesome. And it's little things like that that makes the Canadian market and Canada super special for those nights. You're like I've come a long way since I yeah. since I chirped <laughs> since I chirped Tom Roll on that bus in fucking Toronto. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've come a long way. <laughs> yeah, that that was wild. I won't forget those stories. He either. shouldn't have said what he said. Yeah, Weezy baby just wanted to give a little chirp on the way on the bus. Next thing yeah. you know, Weezy's yeah. in the cold. Weezy's in the cold. Fun there, coach. Hey, T Rex, calm down, buddy. It's a long season. I have a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, see you later. Back to the coast. Weezy, I want to ask you like. You know, obviously, you're you're still in and and you know relax mode, and I'm I'm sure you started to train a little bit. But once you get going, like you know, watching the first round this year, like I don't know how close you've watched mm-hmm. it, but like I, I I've just gotten rinsed, bro. It's been a bloodbath. Like <laughs> I've lost every bet I've made. But like for a team yeah. like you that was so close to getting in, is that something you can use as motivation? Like boys, let's just get in the playoffs. Looks what happened here. Like is that something you may use to motivate you on those days that maybe you don't want to get in there and do the extra bike ride or whatever? Yeah, I mean. I think as a fan, I'm still such a big fan of hockey. So I'll, I'll always tune in and, and watch the game still in playoffs. And, um, you know, as a fan, this playoffs, this has been unbelievable, that these games, um, first of all. But as a player, you're not being in the playoffs is, you know, I'm pissed off and yeah. frustrated because I'm like, this, look how fun it is out there and look how many people are involved this year and the tweets. And it's, it's so, it's just getting bigger and bigger and it's, it looks so fun out there. So it's just more motivation to get there next year, obviously. But, um, you know, as a fan, the, it's been fun to watch, you know, this first round of playoffs for sure. And we sorry about losing all your money too. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's okay, bud. Hey, uh, I hey. never got divorced, so it's like I made double what I made. Weezy. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 smartest yeah, yeah. thing you ever did, bud. Um, <laughs> thanks, bud. Yeah, you, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, bud. Yeah, you can say the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Weezy, no, no yeah. one uh, understands kind of what it's like to you know leave a team or get traded, watch your guys go the distance, especially the guy sitting next to me, but. You know, watching Florida, watching what they just did in the first round, are you shocked with kind of, um, you know, what they were just able to accomplish? And then, you know, at any point watching that series, are you cheering for them, against them? What's kind of <laughs> like deep down? I know I know what I used to feel, but what, what are you thinking yeah. now when you're watching the Panthers go? And then what an atmosphere that they have in South Florida, right? So you got to be happy to see their fans mm-hmm. happy. But, but g- give me a dive in on what that feels like to watch them. Yeah, I it's it's almost bittersweet. You're yeah. happy to see, you know, Eki and Barky and uh Verhage, Montour having a monster year. Um, you know, I'm not really that surprised just because I know, you know, be, being in that dressing room for a long time, there's 
there's some great, great players in that locker room. Um, you know, as far as me, you know, rooting for them, I don't think I'm rooting for them. Yeah. Um, but, tough. you know, I, I'm happy to see that they're doing well. Um, you know, don't get don't get me wrong. I'm probably cheering for at least the second round. But, um, <laughs> you know, if they end up, I don't want to be, you know, spiteful or anything. But if they do keep going on, I'm, I'm going to be so happy for the guys that I played with. And, um, you know, they deserve it. They're working hard down there. They're growing the game in Florida. Um, they're putting everything on the line and, and they just beat a powerhouse team. So um, they're playing great hockey, but um, you know, as far as me cheering for them, I don't think, you know, that's not, I'm not sure. Hey, Weeksy baby. <laughs> I, I went through it my first year, man. I got traded at the deadline from Anaheim to Tampa. Then I came back here. I was living, living at, I was here. living at Loops's place, fucking mixed it in Newport and like gets left Penner and Perry. Obviously I'm happy for those boys, but like yeah. deep down, I'm like, they win yeah. the Stanley cup. I'm like, wow, man, no, this is tough. This sucks. This sucks. Like, yeah, not yeah. to be part it's of it. It's something with- that you don't really, for- you, you, you'll never forget those kind of things, right? You think you could have helped that team win too. So yeah, uh, that's tough. And then I remember, I remember Darcy Tucker the next year was like, hey, did you get your ring, O'Brien? Did you get your ring? I was like, easy, well, tux, easy Tux. Easy, yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, easy well, Tux. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tux ended up back at my place a couple of times in Vancouver <laughs> at Cole Harbor there. I said, Tux, remember when you let me have it there? My second yeah, year? Yeah, like, like, I looked up to you, motherfucker. What do you want? You want whiskey? What do you want? Whiskey, buddy? Yeah. Oh, Tux. <laughs> um, uh, Weezy, I want to ask you about something that's important in Canada, too, is, is the media. And... Mm-hmm. For all the shit that I was in sometimes in Vancouver, I was always good with the media. They were always good with me. Is it something that you've, from my opinion, you're, you're, you're being yourself with them, which is great, but is that something you're going to continue to, to work on or just be yourself and let it play out how it plays out? No, absolutely. I think that was one of the biggest things for me is I remember, you know, coming in and, um, you know, being like, holy shit, you know, look at all you guys, look how many of you there are. <laughs> and, you know, they kind of got a chuckle and, um, the media was always good to me there. I was always good. You know, they're still great to me. I think we have a great relationship just because I know if they really wanted to, they can roast me here and there. So I try to, <laughs> you know, get on their good side, but there, there's a lot of good people in the media there. Um, you know, I got, to, I got to get to know them a little bit outside of, you know, you know, them having a recorder in my face or a mic in my face. So, um, you know, there's a lot of great guys and a lot of great women there. So, um, I'll always be friendly with them and I'll, I'll always try to, you know, make them laugh and make it lighter, lighter for them as well. <laughs> they can ro- I know they can roast me if they wanted to. Yeah. Well, they're going to roast you eventually. Don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they would, but I'll just laugh at it. If they're not roasting you, they don't like you. So that's, uh, yeah, yeah. you got to take a roast here and there. Yeah. Absolutely. And it just means you're making decent cash too. And they yeah. let you have a little bit, it's right? better to be in the yeah. over, on. Yeah. Better better to be on. in that overpaid club than the underpaid. Fuck. I was I always, was try- the- I was trying to get in that overpaid club. I know I was in there yeah. for a while. But you were there was on the underpaid for a while. A bit, weren't you? Would yeah. you say you're overpaid? Down the floor? stretch, I should have been paid more. In St. Louis? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck. Yeah. For, the, for the job. They should have gave you like a million and a half, eh? Or something At like that. At least. Yeah. What's, what's 800 now? What's, the, what's that Pooley Harvey yeah. making? What's, what's Pooley Harvey making in Carolina? Because <laughs> <laughs> you were better than him. You were better than him. You were better than him, but. I heard he had to apologize to Yamamoto or something like that. Is that right? I saw fucking Yamamoto. I was just gooned the other night at JW Marriott. <laughs> yeah. I bumped yeah. into. Uh, Brad Malone and Calvin Pickard. Remember those guys? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Is that Bugsy or no? Is no, that... that's Bugsy's cousin, Brad Malone. He still okay, plays in okay, Bay. Yeah. They're both still playing. They're, right. they're journeymen, right? Uh, Brad for Malone sure. I had in San Antonio, and I think Pickard too. Yeah, but Brad's been there for a while now, probably at least six, seven years. Yeah. Was, was Edmonton? At, yeah, yeah. when I was at training camp, oh, he was still there. Yeah, he stayed in Kirky. Kirkwood. Or, they married yeah, her. Uh, Kirk Muller's yeah, daughter. Yeah, that's right. Married yeah, her? Kirk Muller's daughter, yeah. yeah. He's got to be a beauty, right? Up, he loves Kirk, Kirk Muller. Muller's an absolute legend. Oh, yeah. He's a legend. Yeah. He's, yeah. I, I don't know what ha- is going to happen, obviously, with the coaching change, but if they're gone, uh, Kirk, he, uh, will be a guy for sure. Oh, God, my God, Kirk. He was my yeah. top top five. Well, top two, actually, yeah. assistant, like forward coaches. So I bumped into those guys. They were they were going back to catch a flight to Bakersfield. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I don't miss this. I feel sorry for you boys. <laughs> but Yamamoto was over there, and I was like, and they kind of insinuated, like, he hears what I say about him. He's like, yeah, there's Yamamoto. Yeah. Obes. I'm like, should I go up to him right now and just be like, fuck, what a goal, buddy. What a fucking goal. I'm like, I'm too drunk for that. But uh, yeah, I mean, to see that side of it, though, upset these guys that were just called up just in case and they had to go back to Bakersfield. It's like yeah. people forget, like, it, it, obviously it's McDavid and Drysdale, but there's so many pieces to a team. Yeah. Right? And last year, yeah. Malone came in in like the conference finals. And I'm like, fuck, yeah. he's throwing right in there. Like, it was like, yeah. you know, there's opportunity there to these guys that still. You know, yeah, can fucking aces. get the puck out and win you a never draw know and you be a good be like, guy. Get in there. Yeah. yeah. They still tell me there's a chance, huh? Uh, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's a chance for you, bud. Um, Weeksy, obviously, 
You know, Tree Living decided to step down. Uh, Updog loves Brad. I love Brad. We all know you love. Yeah. We all know you love Brad. Uh, <laughs> and then you know, Daryl obviously gets fired. We we don't need to get into all that. But like, was there any moments through the season where Daryl just gave you guys like yeah, Daryl moments, like a Daryl moment where he left the room and you just kind of looked at somebody and went, "Holy fuck, that yeah. was great!" Like, was there any of those moments, or was it just almost too serious this year? No, lots of moments like that. Oh my god, um, he's Daryl's obviously he's. He's great to clip in the media. I mean, he says some funny stuff. Obviously, he can, uh, you know, he can, you know, give it to you, give it to you for sure. It's never, it's never individual. It's more of a, you know, you know, it's for the team. But you sort of know who you're. Ta- he, you sort of know who he's talking about. Um, but there was many times where he was in the dressing room, and uh, if you if you make eye contact with the buddy and and he almost <laughs> gives you a smirk, then you're both going to, yeah. you know, start chuckling. And so you got to be careful, but um, <laughs> it is sad. It, it's sad to see them both go. I, you know, you never want to see anybody go. It just means that, you, you know, you, the season was tough. So um, for Brad to, you know, step down and get a change, I think that's sort of what he needs. And, um, you know, personally, uh, you know, I'll be the first one to say it is that I thought we, we, we also needed a coaching change. And, um, you know, I'm excited to see, uh, you know, what happens in the future here. Yeah. Did he have did he have any whipping boys? Like who is I was a whipping boy for a few guys. Like did did he uh, did he have his guys or or could he like could he like lean on you? Would he like chirp you to make an impression and you just know like fuck, you know what? I'll just I'll I'll take it today. But like how how was his message how was his message message getting across to some guys? Would he whip of the same yeah. guys or would he go around and maybe hit like a like a you know, a veteran like yourself with yeah. something? I would I would say um Backland. Uh, he would get it pretty good, but back when uh, he'd fight back for sure, he would have, uh, you know, a couple of fucky matches and um, you know, it's always good to talk about those after the game and, and laugh about it. But um, back when for sure, I think, you know, Daryl, I believe drafted him. Uh, he's coached him for a long, long time. They obviously have a, a different relationship that, you know, nobody can speak about. It's just them too. And um, you know, good for Backlund and, you know, good for Daryl. You know, sometimes that gave us a spark. Um, you know, I think everybody's gotten to a little altercation with Daryl uh, <laughs> once in their lifetime, but, um, you know, sometimes it was needed, you know, I think, you know, sometimes he pushed those buttons that were, that were needed to be pushed. And, um, you know, those, you know, like I said, after the game, they were always kind of, you know, fun to look back on. Yeah. <clears throat> that reminds me of Torx in Tampa. Like, yeah, you say you gotta be careful, not laughing. Like I would go up to like. <laughs> I don't know, Bugsy or like Kyle Wanvik or Nick Tarnaski. I'm like, boys, I'm going to take it on the chin 100% for this. When the video comes in and Torch would just come in, first clip, you'd be like, bing, Obi, what the fuck are you doing here? And I would just like look at like Tarno and be like, put your head down. Because yeah. you kind of knew it was coming. I'm like, I- I'm going to get ripped for yeah. sure. And it's like, there's no way I'm getting yeah. out of this. I mean, but, but the message, you know, it, it gets across. But he's done it with championship teams. He's going to do it with teams that are, you know, hovering yeah. around. It's Long I mean, seasons, it, you got to be able to just like it got so it got so bad that I halfway through my second year there, I would first thing I would do it, I get come in, get a heat pack and a coffee, I go right to Nigel's room, the video coach, and I'd be like, "How bad is it today? How many clips am I yeah. in?" And he'd like be like, pull up the thing, be like, "You get you're in nine clips." You're, you're in nine, I'm like nine. Yeah, clips? This has got to be some nine sort of record. clips. Fuck! How can this be nine yeah. clips? So Wait, we're doing nine clips, and they're yeah. all of me. They're all of me. Like, did anyone else not play bad? So I, I know yeah. what you're saying there, Weezy, but. Torts had some great comments. Um, I want to ask you about Big Looch. How was it play with Big Looch? Uh, I believe he's a free agent, so who knows what's going to happen. But what's it like having an old school guy like that on your squad? He's great. Looch is awesome. He's obviously uh, a legend of the league, um, but a great leader in the room. Um, you know, he's also old school that likes to, you know, get everybody out of the out of the dressing room and, you know, maybe go have a couple, you know, beers and, and uh, hang out and, um, you know, get everybody closer. Um but Luch was Luch was great to have uh, in the dress room and also in the lineup. Um, you know, no, there wasn't too many words being said if he was, you know, on the ice or you know on the bench because you know nobody wants to get the big boy going. Um, you know, for <laughs> me, that the the one thing that stood out was the fight uh, with McDermott this year. I got you know first, uh, you know, Front first row, row seat to that one. Seat, I was yeah. right right in front of it on the ice and. Um, you know, he, obviously it's always scary to see a guy go down, but, um, that one, I couldn't get, ex- you know, more excited for, I started kind of smacking my stick on the ice. I kind of felt bad after, but, um, you know, he's a monster, <laughs> he's a beast. Um, you know, I don't know what his plans are next year. I know he likes Calgary, but I'm sure we'd love to have him back in the, in the, in the room with us. 
Yeah, and just one last guy I want to ask you about is, is Kadri. I bumped into we bumped into Kadri at the All Star game. I used to party with him a little bit in Toronto when Loops was there, and um, you know, I, I thought he played well for you guys. But but moving forward, like that's a guy that I think Weezy, you know, give him another year to train, get used to Calgary. Like he's a good yeah. piece for you guys moving forward, in my opinion. Absolutely, he's he's a hell of a player. I thought he came out of the gate super strong. Excited to be there, and um, you know, then maybe I thought you know the year maybe started to drain on him a bit or. Or whatever, but I thought there's another guy that uh, is going to be huge for playoffs, uh, playoffs for us, and um, you know down the stretch. But I think for Naz, it was you know like some other guys is that you know I think he sort of maybe needs a little reset this summer and is looking forward to um, you know new GM and new coach, um, you know that can get him into the right areas and the right situations, and um, you know looking forward to see what he can do for us next year as well. He's a, he's a hell of a player. Yeah, I agree. And last but not least here on the Calgary Flames, I mean, your year-end interview <laughs> when you said, I think we need a new fucking barn. I mean, I, I just laughed right away when I saw it. I was like, Weezy, he's such a beauty. Yeah. So I, I think you pushed across the finish line, Weezy. Yeah, 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 All yeah, I know is, sure. listen, yeah. I'm no genius, but Weezy baby says we need a new barn. Month later, yeah. they got a new barn. So how excited are you? Because listen, I've been in that salad dome. It's fucking terrible. Like, that's where my career went to die, Calgary. And the Saddle Dome, I had some lonely mornings in there where, like, I was sitting in that shitty room, the shitty change yeah. room. So how excited are you for the fans, the players, and just the whole city? Yeah, I, I mean, I, it was pretty funny. And obviously, um, kind of a weird coincidence that a week later they, you know, yeah, they well, yeah. got the new rink going. Uh, funny <laughs> story, actually, is that the, the the owner actually called me uh, – the, the next day and when I his no, number comes up as a Swiss num, Switzerland number and I was like oh god here you know the owner's calling me you know <laughs> what's he gonna say here but he calls and he says Mackenzie you know I just want to thank you and I was like oh yeah he's like you know for getting us the new arena and he starts <laughs> laughing he starts laughing and I, and I was like oh yeah no no problem or whatever just joking around he goes but the only thing I'm thinking about naming it the Uyghur arena <laughs> I, started, I started laughing and he goes the only thing with that is uh the sponsorship fees are, are pretty expensive. We're going to take your contract away. <laughs> okay. And I started laughing. I was like, I think I need to talk to my agent. But um, <laughs> we, And then we, we, we just had a serious conversation after that. But it was good to, you know, that he called and uh, he's excited for the new arena. I'm happy that, you know, a bunch of uh, groups got involved and, and they made it work. I think there's still, uh, I think there's still some stuff that needs to get done. I think there's an, a re-election or, or something like that. And, and stuff but i really hope that you know the city still pushes for it i think they need it i think we need it um and it'll just create more excitement for next year and, and the years to come yeah you're right about that I, i'm an alberta boy calgary needs hockey and it needs like their players having a having a proper barn yeah and I, will, I will say this we're talking to the owner tell him put as many pisters in that place as they can oh, because the, top the old salad dome two years ago when me and up he went i mean i had to I had to go down the dressing room. Didn't we go down the dressing room and take a piss? Yeah, the wives room. <laughs> we went to the wives room. I'm like, I'm not yeah, waiting yeah, for this yeah, one. Yeah. So tell, mention that to a Weezy baby. Yeah, I got a small bladder too, so I'll let them know. <laughs> it's just, no, but it's time. And it's a great it's a great point by you. And, yeah. and you know, hats off to him too for calling you and having a pretty good, uh, you know, a, a yeah. pre pretty good mindset on it all. Be yeah. tight with the mm -hmm. guys and it's good. It's be good for the city and the fans. I want to ask you about your first Team Canada experience coming up right now. Headed to World Championships. Yeah. When this airs, yeah. you'll probably be over there enjoying some, uh, some you know, European wine and some cheese. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Up dog loves the cheese and wine over there. He's fucking <laughs> couldn't yeah. shit for two months, but he had a hell of a time. <laughs> yeah. So you yeah, got, I'm looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, so you got yeah. the call. And, then, and, and by the way, like when your season kind of ends like that, and it's not – you know, the way you want it to, and you, you get this opportunity to go over there. And I, I've done it once. So share like, you know, what you're feeling and, and the excitement to put the wheels back on and go compete for your country. Yeah. I think for me, the biggest thing is throwing that Jersey on, um, you know, I've never really gotten to experience it. Um, that'll, that'll mean a lot to me, really special. Um, but obviously going to compete and play some meaningful hockey and try to win a gold medal um, while having a great time with the boys over in Europe. So I, I think it's a win-win. Uh, for me, but, um, you know, my family's going to come down, um, and check it out as well. So it'll be just a great experience overall. And, um, you know, my family doesn't get to travel too often. So having all, all of them down there and, um, watching me play hockey for Canada, I think will be the coolest experience. And, um, you know, I, like I said, I'm just looking forward to it. I know Toffoli and Lucic are actually coming as well. So, um, mm -hmm. it'll be, it'll be nice to have a couple of the other boys with me and, um, you know, share a lot of memories. 
Fuck, nice. I might come over to hang out with Luch. Yeah, Luch is going. Luch. I'm coming. Yeah, Let's nice. go, Luch. Bye, hey, Luch. Yeah. Luch is yeah, going. He might, he might wear the C over there. Give him the C. <laughs> yeah. Give him the C. Big Luch. Yeah, he'll wear the C on and yeah. off the ice. Yeah, oh, yeah. Exactly. Big Luch. I might fucking fly over there. See, you. check my air miles. See if I got enough to get over <laughs> yeah. there. But we, yeah, I never got the opportunity to play World Championships for many reasons. But one of them is I would have been out of shape already. What, two weeks? <laughs> I mean, yeah. how, how, how you feel, buddy? Are you are you riding the bike yeah. or what? Do you, be honest uh, with me here. Be honest with me. Yeah. Because two weeks of a year end bender. If I went to World Championships, I would have been in one. Yeah, I, I mean, I could do a little bit more for sure, but <laughs> I, I have gotten on the bike. I've I've skated a little bit. Oh, you did. Uh, I've yeah, I've done uh, a couple saunas that helps. Um, but I think that little training camp over in Budapest before the tournament starts will will whip me into shape pretty good. So, um, it's I'm looking forward to you know getting getting back into shape a little bit. It's such a great experience. So, cause everyone's on the same playing field when you get over there. I'm going to say yeah, it's a little, Canada I'm gonna has say an it's advantage. a little more intense than when you played probably now. No, like uh -huh. I you think it's as much as no, um, no laid back. Yeah. It's laid back until you get the fins, like in the first round. Yeah. And they're like, coming yeah. at you and they, they, you know, all they're doing is, is drinking, doing saunas and doing fucking stair. That's workouts. all they do. I know, but still team Watch Canada, out for the fins, man. you still go over there and it, it's <laughs> no, but it's such a great experience for your family for the kids that come over, for the hotel that they set up and how they, they make this completely, you're going to see first class brought to you by like, n no one's, no by one compares. Yeah. No one compares to this like experience that you guys are going to have with your family and stuff. And I brought my brother yeah. over there and we did, you know, we were in Switzerland. We went to, we went to Latvia. We went to Riga for a couple of days, played an exhibition game, by the way. Yeah. Smoking. I heard Riga's on real. Yeah, smoking. <laughs> Brought uh, everywhere. And then, <laughs> and then when you get back, like the first couple of games Weeks, is basically, baby. your first couple of games is try is, is like kind of like tryouts. Yeah, just, that's true. Yeah. You, get, but, you got but, a couple of games to ease you. Yeah, yeah. And, and then yeah. it's like, it, competition doesn't start till the play in rounds, like the quarterfinals. All of a sudden you're like, okay, guys, we've got all the you know, cobwebs out. Let's go fucking win one. And yeah. then you dial in mode. <laughs> We lost to like, right, We boys, lost to Russia, but no. But it's, quit fucking yeah. everything that moves here. Let's try to get this one done here. Um, no, and then I took my brother. Yeah, we went to Amsterdam. We went skiing after in, in Switzerland, and we went to Amsterdam. I'm like, you got to make a trip of it. Where are you going after, by the way? You taking the uh, – Yeah, I'm going to go to London somewhere? After. Yeah. 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 See? Yeah. So you win. Yeah. You, you go get that gold, and then you cruise around London, London. drink some old fashions. You're gonna love London, buddy. Pubs everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I went with this beauty. Yeah. I had to go home though. I got too fat from eating fish and chips. I had to go <laughs> yeah. home because I was too fat. My clothes didn't fit me anymore. <laughs> but you will love London. It's a great city. Yeah, we yeah. did London. Hopefully, Empire. I can just rock the gold medal around London and, yeah. and have some beer with the old lady and, and hang out and exactly. chill. Have you ever played on the big ice there? Five two. Have you ever played on the big no, ice? No, oh. no, no. The last time I played on the big ice was in, like in in the queue. Shakutami had yeah. like the Olympic size ice, but I haven't played on. You're that. You're gonna I'm, love it. There's no, no stops and hey, starts. Hold the dots great. is all yeah. I'm gonna tell you. Don't get too <laughs> wide. Don't get too wide because those fins yeah. will put it between your legs. Next thing you know, you're like, where'd that guy go? But <laughs> there's so much ice out there. But yeah. Um. So you're some plans weeks we actually are um we got a nice little sponsorship from taylor made this year so we're going to send you some nice. taylor made stuff yeah how is awesome. your golf game how is it is it better than it was in san antonio well uh, I, I honestly obes it's i haven't played golf since i got to calgary at the beginning of the season i it's just been such a write-off this year that <laughs> it's the last thing i'm thinking about is golfing but i think when i get back from from worlds i'll I'll start to swing them again. My buddies are getting a little bit more into it, but uh, I'll gladly take some Taylor made stuff. And, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to send you some Taylor made stuff. I got some merch coming your way. I'm going to need your address. Uh, but what about your summer plans? Obviously, you're going to work out hard. Yeah. Uh, are you going to spend some time on the lake? Like, how do you, how do you, you know, yeah. after a nice workout, how does Weezy Baby like to relax and put the feet up and be a national leaguer? Yeah, well, I mean, this is the first year I have the cottage. So for me, it'll probably be, you know, working out in the morning and then, you know, drive on up to the lake. Hopefully, you know, Ottawa can, you know, bless us with a little bit of sunlight and, and some warm weather. But um, looking at getting a boat and throwing that on the lake and just hanging out, um, you know, for me now, I'm, I'm getting, I like, I'm getting all day up. All right, hey, boys. So uh, I'm just going to chill on the lake, have my parents come up and hang out and um, take it easy. But, you know, got to train hard. I, I want to take next year super seriously and, and, and get back into the right, right mentality. Have you have you been to Hubie's lake house before? No, He's, no, but it's probably this guy, this guy wants a, a candidate party and his band, <laughs> this band playing on top of his boat house. I'm like, He's and every, all shot. the boats in the lake. He likes to do a big, he does like to do a big. I got to give him credit, but 
Uh, he's probably living well this summer. I know. Like I always, uh, like I, I changed my, I came to California like 28, right? So it was no, Hubie's I, age. Was that, were you that old? Yeah, I was, I was 27, 28 when I moved down here. But like I had the lake, <laughs> I had that lake life before. Fuck, we did some damage. I know we did. Um, and then when I see Hubie's like workout videos in the summer, so he's like in his garage, he's got no bare, he's the bare feet. He's doing like, you know, that, that one, like oh, that yeah. pu push pull yeah, fucking yeah, exercise. Yeah. He loves that. He loves it. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck, I, I miss he that life. That. But if I could have like, a fucking sick setup for your gym in your garage with the beach, yeah. with the door open, the lake. And I'm like, Hubie's fucking. No, it's a great lifestyle. He's got to figure it out. It's a great lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, eventually I'm, I'm looking in Ontario two weeks to buy a place here. I'm just waiting for oh, maybe nice. the market to, to simmer down a little Why, bit. You're going to, you're going to move back or. Well, I've always my I've always wanted a place like in the Corthus, probably in Ontario, yeah. north of Peterborough, and I got two nice. nephews, so that's the plan. Got a little investment in Canada that I hope hits, but if yeah, that yeah. doesn't hit, then no, that's not going to happen. We, <laughs> unless I send you the bill Hopefully from San hits, Antonio, well. how much do you owe me, Weezy? Let me yeah. chalk it up. Yeah, yeah. Austin, yeah. You the W. Go back in your accounts me. and see what you owe me. Austin, the <laughs> W. Austin, I'll W. Fucking those San bottles, Antonio. Uh, those bottles in yeah. Houston. Yeah. Yeah. Camus. Charlotte. I had so much Camus with fucking old guys. Charlotte. Guy. I can't even look at the bottle anymore. <laughs> We did have a little bit of canvas, didn't we, fella? You were good for me oh, back yeah. then. I was, you're, you're the only thing that kept me sane that year, Weezy, baby. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking about Ottawa, you say you're getting old now, but yeah. back when I was younger, shout out to my boy, Brad Richardson. We would always do July 1st in Ottawa on Market yeah. Street. Like how much of a, just a great time. That, I was seeing the ball well back then, Weezy. <laughs> <laughs> it buzzes down there. The, the market in uh, Parliament Hill uh, uh, for July 1st, is a, it's it's wild. It's, it's a great place to come, but I think... Uh, the plan is to have my own little candidate party up at the up at the cottage. So um, those days are I've I've done so many candidates at Parliament Hill that I can't. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm done going down there. That's sort of why I got the cottage to escape downtown and and the market there and just go up and and chill and uh, just have my buddies up there. But it was a great time back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to stay at that. What was that hotel right there? It was just a shitty one right beside the, the, the cabin. The or the no right down Sh Shadow Laurier. No, no, it was greasier than that. I'm talking right beside the cabin. It was like. It was oh, like a days uh, in or something or a qual. It wasn't yeah, very yeah. great. It was greasy. It's a little Marriott courtyard Marriott. That's exactly what it is. Me and yeah. Richie, oh, baby, yeah, yeah, workbench yeah, yeah. in there. Oh, we get That's exactly where you belong back then. Oh, oh yeah, buddy. And we, get, nice spot. We, we get conjoining rooms and it was just on. I just oh, yeah. Can you still say that? For the weekend? <laughs> for July 1st, full throttle, buddy. Me uh, and Richie, <laughs> baby. It was we unreal. Used to, we used to do Sylvan Lake, which yeah. is the old taint next to Calgary yeah. and Edmonton. Yeah. Uh, Weezy baby, thanks for taking the time, buddy. Uh, enjoy world championships. The boys here at Mr. Curfew love you. We appreciate everything you do for the podcast and have a great summer. Maybe I'll see you in July. I'll be back in Ontario. Maybe I'll fire you yeah, a text yeah. there. Maybe we can have yeah, a Yeah, you're more than welcome to come up and, and check it out. Thanks got, for having me, boys. Yeah, of course. You got to win that gold medal too, bud. So you got a king size yeah. bed in the spare room, or what kind of bed you got in the spare room there? I, I I'll, need. A, I'll, I'll get something for you. I'll get something. <laughs> you for sleep you. on the boat, bro. Huh? <laughs> You'll be sleeping nice. Yeah. I'll get something comfy for you for that big Tits train. Up. All right, Weezy baby. Thanks, buddy. Yeah.